Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines. And this is I Am Loved Church. When I first got saved, I had someone come to me, or before I first got saved, someone told me something. They quoted from Proverbs, and that verse is, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. Most of my Christian walk, when I started reading the Bible, going to church, and doing the things that I thought I should do, which is what we should do. I didn't realize the intention of my heart at the time. And as I'm walking out my journey with Jesus every day, I'm starting to find something that I didn't see inside myself. And I'm starting to see this, uh, this brokenness. Like I knew I was broken. I knew that I had problems. But not like everybody else's problems. But I'm seeing something that is so broken that I, no matter what I do, I can't fix it. You know, I went to Bible school, I was college, and then I went to just kind of like a, taking these courses called Pathway. You know, I went to church and <clears throat> I prayed and all this stuff. Now, it sounds like I'm saying I'm giving up on my faith. Absolutely not. But I'm realizing what faith really is. And the verse that comes to mind is, Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. And I thought I had all the faith in the world. I thought it was mine. I had something to boast in or the knowledge that I knew about God and people didn't. So I'll condemn people, I'll judge people, I would hurt people. As I walk or live my life, reading the Bible and praying, I'm finding more and more that I need him more and more every day, every moment that it's not of myself, but it's of what Jesus did for me. I wanna put it to you this way. Probably most people watching this videos or this video, you're not a doctor. And if you are, you're not an astronaut or there's something in this world that you don't know. We don't know how gravity works. We don't know how every organ and atom and um, tissue works and our blood flows, doctors do, but they don't know everything about the body. We're still learning about the human mind. We're still learning about the world around us. Let alone, we did not create it from absolutely nothing. We as human beings, we need things two things to create something like a man and a woman to create children. We need to grab actual objects. God does not. He can create something from nothing. Wow. And I think about myself and I go, just because I'm aware of how it works, how everything around me works and um, I'm unaware of it does not give it doesn't mean it doesn't have a purpose and maybe some of you guys are feeling that way because people don't notice you or you don't look a certain way or act a certain way or think a certain way or you don't you know 
go to church like these people or whatever your issue is, doesn't mean that you don't have a purpose or God doesn't have a purpose for you. That's how I've been feeling lately. I've jumped around churches here in this town and in the world and I'm kind of thinking to myself, my prayers, I'm like, God, I don't fit in. I just don't feel like I fit in. No matter where I go, it's like, I don't know, I just don't fit in. Feel judged or am I being the judger or whatever. You know, I want a place of security. I want to be in a place, no matter where I go, what I do, I'm going to be okay. I'm aware of a lot of sins that I commit. But I'm also not aware of a lot of sins that I commit. Just like I'm aware of how, what dirt molecules are actually in its particles or whatever. Or how I breathe even though I don't think about it and how it works and flows through my body. But what I do know is what I know now. And as I experience life, it changes. One of the things that Jesus said um, is profound in this sermon, I guess, is he says, you hear the wind, but you don't know where it came from. And you see it leave, and you don't know where it's going. And he says, I know where I came and I know where I'm going. And it's this concept for me when I think of that is the whole Bible is rooted in this one thing. And it's faith. It's believing in something even though you don't presently see it. For what does a man believe for that what he sees? And it made me think about that for a while. That's actually what I've been thinking about lately, what's been coming to me. Just because a lot of you guys don't see God, it doesn't make him not real. It makes us ignorant or unaware of his presence. Or some of you who think that he's not around and he's not talking to you, it doesn't make him non-existent. It's this idea of tuning into him, learning who he is, following him, you know. God is all present, all knowing, all powerful. So I want to kind of cut it real quick and uh, get back to my point. time I got. I'm almost done. Gotta be. Uh, I think I gotta be, right? <laughs> um, I've been reading through the Psalms a lot. One of the things, I just say David because he wrote most of it, but uh, David, he, um, he said one verse that stood out to me is that my righteousness is in you, God. As he's, and this is like after he like sinned, ch cheated on his spouse, and he slept with Bathsheba. Um, he says, my righteousness is in you, God. And it's this idea of like when I fall short, uh, we fall short every day in areas we are unaware of. In areas we are aware of, we beat ourselves up. But that's why God sent Jesus. That's why he sent him. He sent Jesus to live a perfect life and to die the death that was due to us, to pay the penalty for sin. He knows we're going to mess up every day. But in Revelations, he says, I make all things new. You committed those sins. You made those mistakes. Yes, 
but that's not who you are. Those things do not define you. There is life past those things. Whatever people say, don't, they don't even define you. And that's what I'm realizing. The Pharisees are basically people who are seeking righteousness outside of the crucifixion, outside of what Jesus did. They're trying to earn salvation. And this is the difference between our faith and every faith out there. When I reach a problem in my life or whatever it is, the real believer does not try to fix the circumstance. He or she does not try to figure it out or whatever or go to a bunch of people. He or she, in a, a metaphor or literal sense, goes to their knees, bows their head before Christ and says, God, you can save me. You can fix this situation. They take all their problems to the cross. And it's not religion. It's, it's the opposite. It's, it's Jesus says, unless you become like a child, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, for those of you who have children or had children or, you know, wherever you're at or have seen children, what happens when the child, usually most children are this way, gets hurt or something happens? They run to their parents. And that's what Jesus is saying. He says, run to me like a child. Run to me, cry out to me, and I will help you. But the righteous, the self-righteous, religious people, they don't do that. What they actually do is they look at the Bible, and I've done this, and it's wrong. And they go, Check, check, I've done this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And when they fall short in something, they cover it up. But in all actuality, they're not actually following the Bible word for word. And that's what he says. Unless you follow the Bible word for word, and if you break one commandment, you broke them all. But we break them every day. Now, I know what you're thinking, those who do believe, oh, we should just go around sinning and da 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 because it's all covered by grace? Absolutely not. Now, I want to break this down for you. In a relationship, what happens? You have someone who speaks and someone who listens. But it's not one-sided. We don't just speak to God like he's a genie and he just listens to all our requests and that's it. Or vice versa, where God just tells us, you do this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and this, like some of our bosses do. And when we want to speak to our boss, we can't. That doesn't, that's not a relationship. That is dictatorship. A relationship goes both ways. We receive by listening, and then we speak, and the other person listens to us. You see, when we grow our relationship with Christ, God, we're supposed to be in this relationship. We're supposed to read the Bible, and that allows God to talk to us, okay? And how we talk to him is prayer, just talk. Yeah. So he talks to us, we listen. We talk to him, he listens. And it's a constant back and forth thing. The religious people, they look at the Bible and they go, I talk to God and he never talks to me. Or that's the way they treat it, I don't know. But I want to kind of end on this, or hopefully this is the ending. I said that, whatever, before. I realized something in myself. I realized that I can't lean on my understanding. I was just looking around, I was in the shower, and I was like, this is like my place that I 
it's just, I don't know, for some reason, I think Einstein said it, or maybe I want to believe that. It's just a place where thoughts are just, I don't know. I don't know. Well, with that being said, I didn't even prove a point then. <laughs> I think about what I think about. And for the first, not first time, but it's been an awakening process. I can't depend or even trust in my own thinking. My thinking is so limited. I am just a meat sack, this body. I am unaware of gravity, of the universe, how it works, how it functions, how, how other people are operating the things. I'm unaware of my body. I'm aware of even how I'm who I am in areas of my life. Why am I feeling this way or thinking this way? But God is bigger than me. So we watched this movie called Polar Express. I've never seen it. I've seen bits and pieces like walking through a house or something. Someone was watching it or like in like a doctor's office. It was just there for, and I wasn't even paying attention. I just kind of, oh, uh, that movie. But I never seen it. I saw it the other day. So good. It's so good. And, you know, um, Tom Hanks' character basically looks like Tom Hanks. He, for those of you who know and those of you who don't, basically he gives this kid a ticket back. It's part of the whole movie, you know. And he, uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. See, I'm so I'm so limited by my vocabulary, too. <laughs> and it says on their belief. I want to I want to paint this last picture. I pray this is the last thing I say. God is so much bigger than we will ever than we could ever than our imagination. He's so much bigger than eternity. He is eternity. He's in sin separates us from that eternal peace, eternal love, eternal just grandness. And the Pharisees, they try to put God in this box. They try to they try to put him in a box and say, oh, he's, he's this, he's this, he's this. And he does tell us bits and pieces about himself, but he's so much bigger than everything. And in my faith, I'm just realizing how big he is, more bigger than I thought him to be, or the world says he is, or even the churches or whatever. He's so big and we'll never figure him out. It, it'll take forever, and even when we reach the end of forever, it'll take forever to learn. But it's all love. And it's this idea of letting go of your understanding, letting go of yourself, and constantly pursuing by faith through these veils of what he really is like. Walk by faith, not by sight. And it's this idea of like our physical being. We want to bring our physical body to a loving place. But he's saying, I live inside of you and wherever you are is the place that I dwell. The places that you are don't define who you are. Neither do the circumstances or your mistakes. What define who, who you really are is your savior. Your savior is wherever you are. You're not your own savior. You are not God. A lot of you guys think that you are God. I know this because I went through this process. Everything I speak of is from experience. 
and you think that you can earn God's love. And I promise you, and I tell you, you cannot. That man on that cross, he is God. And you will never be him. You cannot carry your own sin, let alone the entire world or eternity of sin. And unless you believe, what you see will be all that you're worth. I'm more than a black man or what people say about me or my past. I am more than my mistakes. I can take all that the world has done to my ancestors, does to me daily, and that I do to others or myself. I could take all this junk and I can lay them at Jesus' feet. And I can be healed. I am healed. I am redeemed. My victory isn't of myself. My victory is in Jesus, my help, my savior in times of trouble. Religious people are still trying to earn it. It's the stumbling block that he laid before them. They've rejected the cross and they're trying to do it themselves. And when I mean religious, I mean people who don't believe in the salvation of the cross. That's what I mean, religious. You don't even have to believe in God to be religious. You can just not believe in what Jesus did. That's what makes you religious. So when you look at the world, you judge every little thing. And you judge everyone for little things. But you're so perfect, right? You know who's perfect? That man on that cross is perfect. Whether you were born white, black, Mexican, whatever you think you are, rich, poor, whatever, you can't even boast in your dirtiness. Oh, I've, my life has been worse than yours. I've went through so much this. Or oh, I have all the money in the world or I'm the smartest person. You bring that to the cross. You're trying to compare the cross to that. It's foolishness to those who don't believe. All my faith is on that cross. It's not my faith, it's the faith that he gave me. He is the author and finisher of my faith. And when I look at that cross, personally, I see victory. In any and everything that I go through, victory victory, my victory, my victory. Jesus says, you look through the Bible thinking that you'll find eternal life, but I tell you, I am he. For those of you who do read the Bible religiously, you read it to the point you don't even see it. He's right in your face and you don't even see it. The cross, the cross, the cross, it's the cross. That's the victory. You study the scriptures, you study all these books, you study and go to school and, and it's still not enough. You have no peace and then you're so judgmental with everybody. You think you're so holy. For those of you who don't even go to church, you think you're so perfect, oh, I don't go to church because they're hypocrites. You're a hypocrite too, just because you don't see it or unaware of it. But for me and my family, we look at the victory right before us on that cross. And not the cross that has a freaking Jesus on it. No. The cross that doesn't have Jesus on it. The one, he's risen from the grave. I look at the grave. That's my victory. That's my freedom. He left death. He left it. 
And he wants you to leave it. And he wants you to move forward beyond what you can see. The world is racist. The world is judgmental. The world is hurtful, unforgiving. The world has done this to you in your past, but Jesus is bigger than the world. He's overcame the world. He's not black, white, Mexican. He's not even Hebrew. He's God. He's something beyond our experience here in the physical. And he's saying, if you want to enter in this eternal place of holiness, of purity, of beyond labels, you have to believe in the cross. You have to believe in me. But those of you who still live in this world, you judge the world, you worship this world. Unless you're like me and go to this church, unless you're like me and da 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 da, and whatever, whatever, whatever you are in your life, you're trapped. You're trapped. The world is so much bigger than you think it is. God is so much bigger than you think. He's bigger than this world. He's bigger than what you see and what you don't see. And he wants to save you from it. This world, that's actually your world. The world that you live in is the one that you hate. The one that you made. But until you take the one that you made, how you process everything that you see, until you take it and lay it at the foot of Jesus, foot of the cross, you will never see what you can see. You will never see heaven unless Jesus said this, unless you believe in me, you will die in your sin. My victory is in Jesus. I made mistakes and I keep making them every day. And I'm just like, and I want to beat myself up and the world wants to beat me up. But Jesus is like, hey, Jeremy, the cross. And I go, oh, yeah, yes, victory. I won. Dust my shoulders off. Let's go. Move on. Doesn't define me. Nope. And even when they throw these accusations at me, even when the world judges me, I don't care because of my victories right there. But for those of you who don't have Jesus, that's a big mountain you got to climb, huh? And it never ends. This is a long sermon, actually. Whatever. <laughs> See, I put that expectation on me and God's like, nope. My people need to hear more. Or the people who want to be my people. Man, I get accused all day, every day. The world just keeps throwing burdens on me, left and right. I take all my burdens on my knees at the foot of Jesus. I'm like, here you go. I can't carry that. I don't want to carry any of it. And Jesus happily picks it up in the form of a cross and carries it because he can carry it. It's like Thor. You ever seen Thor or the Avengers, this guy with the hammer? Like only person I know... Captain America can, can pick it up as well. But let's go before that, you know. <laughs> that was pretty cool as well. One of my favorite parts when he picks it up. And Thor's like, I knew it. <laughs> but the concept is like only Thor can pick it up. But this is a literal concept. Only Jesus can actually pick up the cross. Or even like, I think it's like Alexander or something. He pulls the sword out of the rock. But it's like a form of a cross. Only Jesus can pick up the cross and carry it. And I don't mean like, okay, someone else can actually do it. No, you can't do it. I can't do it. No one can do it. The only person who could do it is God. <laughs> God is the only one who can pick up that cross and carry it. And carry it as if it doesn't weigh anything. I know what it looks like in, when he's being crucified, but yes, but he was carrying it as a man. That's what it looked like. Ah. And that's what he said, the flesh is weak. It is weak. We're weak. We're weak to temptation. We're weak to gossip and lust and all these things, you know. But Jesus, he's not weak. He's strong. He's like, oh, 
carry this up here. Oh, nail me to the cross. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't even cry once. As uh, Isaiah, he talks about, he says, uh, they will not hear him even cry. Basically complain to anybody, you know, the only person he took his complaints to were God. You know, and a lot of us do that. We can eliminate that if we go to God. You don't have to complain to your neighbor or your spouse or whoever. You can just take all your burdens to the cross. Take it to Jesus. I think that's pretty much it. I know this is like the fifth time I said that. I want to end, but I don't. I feel like there's more and more. Like, I'm going to end. And then he's like, keep going. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> this has been a hectic New Year's. And <laughs> it sounds like I'm going to say, where well, let's end. Let's end on the New Year's, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, man. God is good, man. Like, Think about it. We live in a world that people complain about everything. Everything. Rich and poor people complain. Rich people are complaining. Poor people are complaining. What's the difference? They're both lighter than vapor. <laughs> God is good. He's good. He's nothing but good. And can you imagine seeing a whole world complain about Everything and anything, all the time. You know, there are people with their old countries who actually have things to complain about, you know, and we're in America being complaining about, like, you know, dumb stuff. <laughs> I'm not going to mention something, whatever. Uh, the way, oh, did you see the way they looked at me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I know I've done this. Don't worry. I'm not, I'm not just judging you, judging myself. <laughs> and actually seeing people be grateful or be happy, like genuinely without a reason attached to it. Like we have reasons. Oh, why are you happy? Oh, I got a new car. Oh, I got a new job or whatever. I got new clothes or whatever, you know, or <laughs> you never see someone happy for no reason, you know, <laughs> why are you happy? Because God is good. And that's what the church should be like. God is good. And it should also be a place where you can lay it all down. But we all have our own walk with Christ. God didn't call a group of people. And it's hard to understand a lot of churches or people in churches because the churches are not the building. I thought it was. I really did. I was like, it's a building. It's a pulpit. You know, it's the pastor. You know, it's these people that go. And I got to get everybody to go. And then I realized it's us. It's each and every one of us. I don't expect my child to know the things that I know. Neither do I expect a new believer, even though I do I expect a new believer to know the deep things about God. We can't, first off, when I'm learning, right now is not to compare yourself with anybody it destroys your walk with christ it destroys joy it's rottenness to the bones the bible describes it you cannot compare yourself to anybody we do it all the time i know it's terrible <sighs> This flesh is weak, man. It's weak. This, when I mean flesh, I mean these bodies. They're sinful. All they want to do is sin. Ten commandments, all the commandments of God. No, I want to do the opposite. And this is what happened when we fell. We fell in the garden. The spirit of righteousness fell from us. And we just, all we crave is evil. But when we get saved with Jesus, he enters into our hearts 
and we start to desire to do what was right, what's right, which is the law. But it's not us doing it. It's him doing it through us. The Pharisees are trying to do it by themselves. They're trying to say, I can do that with my own understanding. I understand that. First off, they don't. I can do that. First off, they can't. <laughs> no matter even if they think that they're doing it. How do I know this? Because I went through that. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> you know oh and then i look at the destruction that i made <laughs> i'm like that's not how you build the house i thought that's how you did it you know and <laughs> this made a bunch of people mad <laughs> they're just like he just destroyed everything but god's so loving he just loves us so it's this idea of like we're never gonna get it right first off we're never gonna fully understand it First off, in the moment that we think we do, we become fools. We only understand it while we have it, and then it flees. And it's just this like, wow, like Jesus said, the word remains forever. My words never change. The wisdom of the world, the knowledge of the world, the cool philosophies and things that we think about all day, they always change. They're popular one day, and then they're not. I mean, think about music. Music has a lot of inspirational things inside of it it's very unique think about film and art but is it as popular as it was then as it is now no there's new artists why would you need new artists if it's so popular if it's amazing most greatest thing ever why would you need new books if it's the greatest thing ever but think about it this way the bible is still amazing it's still amazing it's an old book and it's still amazing. It's still relevant. <laughs> There's no other book that would be more relevant. No other art piece that will be more amazing. <laughs> so it's just this idea of like, what? How could the Bible keep its consistency? Because it is consistent. Because it's true. What's true has to last forever. What's not true fades away. It's temporary. So if you want truth, read the Bible. If you want something eternal, read the Bible. If you want security, if you want love and peace, eternal peace and love, not temporary peace and love. Money comes and goes. Friends come and go. These bodies will eventually go. Your beauty or whatever you worship in this world will eventually die and fade out. But the Bible will remain forever. God's word is living and active. Just because you're unaware of that you're living in the Bible, we're living in the Bible. Just because you're unaware of it doesn't mean it's not relevant. You don't know how your breath works. You don't know where the wind came and where it's going. Just because you're unaware of how it functions doesn't mean it doesn't apply. My life is terrible. You want to know why? Why don't you read the Bible? It'll tell you exactly why your life is so terrible. <laughs> That's what happened to me. <laughs> I remember I read, that, I read that book on the side of the street. My wife, before she was my wife, bought me on. I opened it up. Sun just opened up. I swear, dude, like I just like a side of the street where there's like a little coffee shop. They have a little chairs and stuff. I sat down. <laughs> I sat down. And it was just the sunlight. It was just cloudy as this right now. Sunlight just opened up and then beamed right up on the Bible. Even though I was unaware of it, does it now I look back out of it, that freaking happened, you know? And I was just like reading it with my face like, oh, like, OK, let's see what this book is about. I opened it randomly and I don't even know why I opened it randomly to the like whatever page. I think it was in Jeremiah or something. And it said, if you do not worship the Lord, your God, one true God, all these terrible things will happen to you. And, li and literally from top to bottom, this, 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 this will happen to you. And I was like, yep, that's happened to me. 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 <laughs> that's funny. Looking back on it. And you're probably thinking, that's not funny. I'm living in that. Well, you want to get out of it. Get yourself a Bible and start reading it. Stop treating it like it's just a normal book. Or stop not believing that it's true. 
I was homeless. Now I have two kids and a wife. If the Bible can fix me, he can fix you. That is the end of my story today. Hopefully you got something out of it. God bless.